All right, let me just throw this down on you. So General Sam said that there were two different types of Tarkov players. He said there were rats, and then there were the chads. And then Fair came up and said, hey, there's actually a third type that you missed. It's called the honey badgers. And I, Operator Drewski, am here to say that there is a unannounced, unknown species yet to be known in the Tarkov universe, the Interchange Goblin. Got one. I'm in Rasmussen, they're in here with me. Man, five man, five man. He's middle. Got you might see an interchange goblin on customs or woods or shoreline and you fight them and they're just a decent player they're just another guy they're just a regular person but little do you know that that honda civic is actually a sleeper and it's got a VTEC in it <laughs> the interchange goblin when selecting a map on escape from tarkov once he clicks the interchange button he instantly becomes a super chad killer killer destroyer of worlds he has played this map over 2000 times he sleeps in the Starbucks. He eats from the rotten pizza in the Papa John's. Empty. Empty. Only light the mold. Let's grab it. Echo. He pees in the Ollie secret stairs downstairs male bathroom. How much vodka did you drink, Ivan? I don't, I don't honestly, I cannot Seriously. tell you. Seriously. This is the guy that plays this map way too much and doesn't play anything else because he thinks that this is the best map in the entire game. He hates hatchlings. He'll shoot hatchlings for breakfast. He'll act like he's friends with hatchlings just to destroy their days because he hates hatchlings so much. Now we're coming up for you. Yeah, take out your hatchets. Come yeah, here. What the Come hell here. He puts Goblin in his dog tag name just to make other players know that he is truly an interchange Goblin. Today I'm going to be going into a stupidly long guide that I did last night. Uh, it's, it's going to be stupidly long and it is a strategy guide, tactics guide, and everything you need to know about interchange primarily for PvP. All right, hello everybody. The long-awaited interchange goblin guide is here and it's it's gonna be a lot of talking. I was going to make this video just a few weeks ago, but I got the flu and I sounded like a frog trying to asphyxiate himself. So we're going to start probably the longest interchange PVP slash a little bit of loot guide that you'll ever see, I think, on YouTube. It's gonna, ooh, it's gonna be a lot. This is gonna be a long video. If you are new, intermediate to interchange, I think that this video is going to definitely benefit you. Even if you know this map a lot, you might find a few spots here and there that you haven't seen before. Um, and that's, that's what this video is gonna be mostly over, is how to fight other players in the interchange map. I personally really, really like Interchange. I don't think it's the best map. I think Reserve, in my opinion, is objectively the best, but this map is just so good, and I'm so, uh, I guess, I guess conformed to this map so far that I really do enjoy playing it. So, I'm gonna be showing you guys a lot of my secrets, a lot of my tips, a lot of my tricks, a lot of weird spots that I've found in the map, and uh, kind of be, there's so much to this map that I can't go all over it unless I were to spend six hours. So we're gonna highlight um, the most important points and I'm just gonna be walking through the map and also highlighting different areas. First, we're probably gonna talk about the outside of the map, then we're gonna go into Idea, then we're gonna go into Goshen, then we're gonna go into Ultra, then we're gonna go into Ollie and go probably explore the southeast area of the map. So I'll leave timestamps right here. I don't know where the heck I'm going to end up here. It's gonna be multiple raids worth because these are offline raids I'm doing and they only last, what, 42 minutes and we're definitely gonna be talking longer than 42 minutes, unfortunately. So you spawned in on Interchange. First thing you need to know when you spawn in on Interchange is the spawn points of other players. Unlike a lot of the maps, 
This map is very circular. This is a very, um, I guess, unit, you know, centrical map, I guess. I don't know how else to say it. There's a big mall in the middle, and there's paths on the outside all the way around. Yes, the parking lot's pretty big and pretty diverse, and there's a lot of space there. But basically, think of Interchange as a big donut. There's the mall in the center, then there's these walls that surround the entire mall, and walking paths. This is actually a good example of one of the thinnest areas between the mall and the edge of the map. Right there, that fence that we're seeing, that wall right there, all the way to the mall right there, that's actually one of the most choke pointiest of choke points. Um, so if you spawn here, which is the north central area of the map between the northwest, um, the railway extract, and power station is over there. If you spawn here like we just did, I wouldn't really run towards power station. I don't think that's a good idea. You kind of choke point yourself as well as you really are eliminate, uh, limiting your avenues of approach over there. Otherwise, you can go you know, underneath idea. You can go all the way out to Ollie. You see those trees? Those are past Ollie. It's pretty, pretty dang far, right? Or we can go out here and go into the front of uh, idea or you can go underneath into idea. Whatever. Uh, so, first thing you need to think about the moment you spawn is you either need to be one rushing into the mall as fast as possible or two extremely aware of both your left and your right so if you spawn in here you're gonna look to your left and to your right for players because again the spawns are all around if you spawn in outside of the mall which you always do there's going to be someone either to your right or to your left you'll slowly learn what spawns are closer to each other and uh, we just spawned out here right behind this rock here. And I am fully expecting um, from the spawn point someone to approach me in the first three minutes of the raid from the edge of that blue wall right there. And we'll, we'll, we'll show you that in a second. All the way to this little area of dirt right here. This entire area of, of degrees, this, this angle here is where players are going to show up. If you go to the top of this white tower right here <coughs> excuse me you can watch the entire angle especially if you have two buddies or something maybe maybe you have one buddy with you he can watch this blue compound area while you can watch this angle it isn't really spawn camping I would say it's more like you're watching an entire area of the map you're watching one-fourth of the outside of the map right here and you're just able to see this entire line down cuts probably one or maybe even two different PMC spawns over there off from being able to enter the map without you seeing them. Now what you can do here is either choose to attack them, which is, it's very common for players, if I spawned here below us, it's very common for a spawn to be somewhere past the, um, the, the you know, upper interstate over there. So players will very commonly come walking down this path, they sometimes rarely come down this way, but more commonly the most common path I've seen them go is right through here either through or to the left side of the uh, go-kart track, and then they walk into idea. Again, they spawned far away. They actually got a pretty bad spawn. The closer you are to the actual mall itself is the better the spawn. There's some spawns which spawn you on top of the southeast extract ramp, the um, the Imercom extroink, uh, extract. Uh, extroink? What is that word? Oh, we're gonna have problems talking today. Um, but there's there's some spawns that spawn you like right up against the building and they are awesome. If you have that spawn, don't even worry about other players around the map. You need to be rushing into the building, going for the loot, wherever you need to go in the building, like let's say Kiba or, you know, Tech Light or Texo, rush those locations because you are the first person that's going to get there 100% of the time if you spawn against the building or right beside the building. There's, um, I believe there's even some spawns that like might spawn you like right in front of idea like right over here i mean you're you're really close to the building right here you're actually one of the better spawns for uh looting idea in particular but yeah so basics of outside combat is that there's only certain paths that you really can go on it's very limited there, there's a huge parking lot there it's it's scary to go across the parking lot. It's better to stick to tree lines. It's better to stick to bushes. Um, I, I guess when you spawn in, the number one thing you need to do is either rush into the mall or focus on trying to trap other players from being able to enter the mall because it's just, it's free game. Uh, now, if you do get into a fight and it is unsuppressed fight, then you'll probably have a third party come up against you. And again, this is a very big and open area. So let's be careful of that. And let's go ahead 
an inter idea. Let's do a path that I would probably do from that spawn point. I'd probably either watch for players running this way. When I'm running up to idea, I'm going to be looking that way, making sure nobody's coming. Um, there are some spawns that could have spawned at the checkpoint up there which is where we see that little red crane. Um, they could have rushed all the way to this tree line by now and be trying to enter idea as well. So again, be aware of that. Damn, I should have bought a flashlight for this. Um, this is the idea front entrance area. And we're gonna talk about idea for a lot of this video because um, it, it's an interesting area. There's a lot of openness to the front mall of or the front part of idea, but I think the openness is kind of uh, it's interesting how gameplay goes up here because there's not really many good actual positions to defend from like Ollie or Ultra But there's positions that players don't check and uh, So we'll go up the front escalator I prefer to go up the metal even though it makes noise if you go up the main stairs you'll have to hit this barbed wire See that and I feel like that makes it a little bit louder of a noise Or might hurt you if you go too far into the barbed wire So I just go up the escalator and I'm right up against the wall Oh <laughs> I pushed my mouse into my keyboard. I'm right up against the wall too, so if a scav shoots me or something, maybe I'm going up that escalator, I can get right up against the wall and not have to worry about trying to hide behind glass. Um, but this is the uh, this is the idea area. Now, uh, something that I'm going to be talking about today is kind of hot zones and cold zones, basically areas that you want to get out of as quick as possible and areas that you want to stay in as much as possible. You want to run through hot zones and hide in cold zones or sneak through cold zones. This area right here, very hot zone. You're going to get shot half the time by a scav that's located right here to your left as you walk in. Uh, he can sometimes be in a really annoying spot, which is right here. He'll shoot you through the glass. It's very hard to see him against this kind of darker background. Um, but up here is a nice spot that's just worth noting. This is what we call sniper camp spot. It's kind of above, you could say it's upper food court. We don't really have a real call out for it. I usually just call it sniper camp spot and my team already kind of knows what that is because we can have just rough call outs for everything. We haven't actually mapped our call outs yet, but we, we, got, we you know, you kind of just get them over time. This is an okay spot, but uh, do note that if someone is watching all the way from ultra way down there, this glass disappears, and so you're pretty dang visible. And shooting through glass is kind of iffy in Tarkov. I don't know exactly the science behind it, but I feel like if you shoot through glass, your bullets just kind of do weird things. Um, so this is a good little prone spot here, although you're lit up very much. You can prone and watch all of ultra um, pretty dang good. Over here is the idea office. This is a pretty common spot for players to go. I have not really found too much stuff here, but a lot of players do like to run into this office. They go and check these countertops. They go and check the PCs for flash drives and all that. There's, you know, some stuff on the tables. Um, this isn't going to be a really loot oriented guide though. This is going to be a guide to PVP. Um, I would just be careful if you go into the front of idea and you enter these offices expect somebody to be coming in the back towards the offices other than a few spawns for lions and cats and a few other like sort of antique things um, at, at like the little fake rooms here there's not really much loot in idea other than this office and this office is usually patrolled by some scavs so you know there might be some loot here in these locations, but there's not right now for great examples. But really, that's most of the loot you'll find in Idea is literally within this this angle right here. So a lot of players will, if you spawn in the front side, came in the front of Idea, expect somebody coming in the back side. Again, you're trying to, as you run into interchange, read what's going on with all of the different spawns. And we're not gonna cover all of Interchange. I think I'm just gonna cover the most parts that I would say are good to go, uh, to, good to be in, good places to go. Cause like there's parts of the parking garage that are just empty. And we're not really gonna talk about those. We're gonna talk about the places that you're most likely going to go. So this is the front area of idea. This is a very hot area. I don't like being in this area because scavs over there, scavs in the cash registers will be all the way along. And then scavs will even go all the way to the back of idea way over there. So when I enter this area, I'll run up these stairs and I'll run straight to ultra, straight around that corner between those two metal plates and go up the ultra escalator 
I like being upstairs in Ultra. Um, but if you're in a combat scenario in Idea, if you, let's say, are stuck in this area right here, one of my favorite places, which is kind of weird um, and has oddly worked in the past, is chilling right inside of this little Idea help desk is what I call it. You can lean right here, you can peek up and have a really good angle, really good head peek angle. Um, and players never expect you to be here. I don't know why. Players just don't look over here. Um, I have won many, many fights from this angle. I, I think, I don't really know. I, I, I've used this sniper camping spot before up there and used it to an extent. And it's good for attacking and ambushing, but in an actual fight, it's really easy to see somebody up there because it's just, it's one line you need to scan. It's just that. Although there is glass there, it's easy. And, and it's really easy to kill somebody. And there's only one way down for them, which is those stairs. And you never really want to be in a situation where you can't just run away. And so I really like this help desk because you have a lot of options. You can always run back to the playground and run to the cash registers and run away or something. Or you can run into here and really have a, a dead end backup plan. I mean, this is like a bunker for grenades to go in or something. I don't even know what this room is back here. This is a little storage room with a fake stairs that goes up to nowhere. Man, I wish those stairs went somewhere. That'd be kind of cool. This bathroom is lit up. Wow, this is like the one lit bathroom in all of Interchange. That's kind of interesting. Um, but this area, I don't really like this this well or so much because it's lit. Uh, you'll note that I will call out a lot of rooms as dark rooms or light rooms. And dark rooms win, light rooms lose. Basically, this room I like. It is a dead end, but if it's your last resort, this is a pretty good room to ambush people in. But we're going to continue. And as I'm walking, let's say I'm continuing the path of uh, me spawning out there, walking in the front of Interchange, walking this way. As I'm walking right here, I'm staying as far right as I can to try to avoid that light. This light, for some reason, does it turn off right? Uh, does it? Yep, there it goes. It's a weird flash. It kind of scares me all the time. It happened in point twelve and hasn't gone away since. But when, I, when you go up here, I want you to look down towards the back of idea. You can see pretty far down there to the back of idea. Um, if someone did spawn a power station and they're rushing to ultra, this is one of the paths that they might use. They might not go into Goshen. They might use idea as a pathway into the upstairs of ultra, which is uh, not great for you if you spawn in the front because there's a good chance that he's gonna see you right there. In my opinion, you have better options here um, because you can always go back there and this area is awesome for camping and ambushing um, while they have, in my opinion, a pretty bad position. They can definitely move around to your left, but you're trying to get into ultra. So you can always just run over here and get into this area. Now, this spot right here is one of the hottest spots in the entire uh, map. There's so many different angles that can see you here. Actually, in, let's say a 10 foot radius of me right now. So many different angles can see us right now. All of idea can see us. The whole sniper cam spot up there can see us. The whole cash registers, maybe some of the area in the back of idea. Um, idea secret stairs can see us. The main idea stairs can see us. Trend can see us. Immercom, all those places down there towards stars can see us. We are in a very hot spot right here. Rush through this spot in any circumstance. Never try to sneak through this spot. There's positions in this map where sneaking is good. There's positions where even if people can't hear you, there's so many angles on you that there's a higher chance that they're gonna see you than they're gonna hear you. So in places like this, you you should never be sneaking. You should never be sneaking. So many players are gonna have far away angles on you. You don't need to worry about sound. You need to worry about your visual um, concealment. So if you come around this corner, you better be running and serpentining and waiting for someone to try to shoot you in the head and get up the escalator or get into, you know, Emercom or get into the front hall as fast as possible. I'll show you guys a good little camping spot if someone's chasing you or if you really just want to be a terrible person, you can lay down right behind this. Um, people will never see you here. I, I have a not, I have, I have used this camping spot and I've been used against this camping spot here. That doesn't make sense. That's not English, but that's a really good spot there to uh, sit and watch people coming around. And they have like zero cover. If you wait for them to get right here in this little kill zone, they have zero cover. It's awesome. Um, so, escalators. Now, this isn't scientifically proven, but we'll hopefully test this in the future. Escalators are we right now because of sound in the game. 
the best way to go up escalators, the best way to think about the escalators is that midway up is when people can hear you on that level. So let's think of someone standing up there and listening to us as we run up. They are most likely not gonna hear us until we're like about halfway, or especially if they're uh, maybe over to the side a little bit, they're not gonna hear us until we're about halfway. So in my opinion, you can sprint halfway and then about halfway start walking. Make sure, 130,000%, make sure you are not sprinting, especially if you're not the first up here. Especially, let's say, you did the super fast run. You spawned out there, you ran into idea, you ran up here, you ran here. Nobody's going to be here before you. If you ran in the mall and you ran quick, as fast as you could, nobody's gonna be here before you, so you don't really need to worry about sprinting and the audible sound spreading around. But if you're 20 or 30 minutes into the raid, never sprint at the top of this. You wanna know how far your sound goes whenever you sprint at the top of this? I'm not joking. I'm not joking, I have proof of this happening. You wanna know how far your sound goes if you sprint at the top of this escalator? Here. No joke. You can hear that escalator if people sprint up it from this line right here. So somebody like like a, like a goblin, could be chilling in Starbucks Dark, which is one of the best freaking places in the entire map. They could be chilling right here at the back door, and they can freaking hear you. Have we heard any interesting things aside from that? Possibly idea ask right now. Any interesting things aside from that? Possibly idea ask right now. Don't sprint up the escalators, you dumb dumbs. Don't do it. So upstairs in ultra we're gonna be talking about this i think idea is like i think the back of idea is important but i think also we're going to be trying to streamline this we're not going to talk about every location in interchange because not every location is important and commonly accessed so the escalator of idea um it is very dangerous going up this escalator look at the amount of like lack of, look at the lack of cover that you have when you come up this escalator. You are totally risking your life every time you come up this escalator. Uh, that's why later in the raid, it's always smarter to just go down there towards those doors and go into the offices and use the idea, idea side of Ultra. We call them Idea and Ollie Secret, but it's actually in Ultra. But there's a stairwell in, in, that, in that door over there that goes all the way up and comes into this hallway up here. And that's what we call Idea Secret. Um, it's kind of like a secret stealthy staircase other than these which are metal and uh, there's also no loot between the staircase there's nothing really between it's just a single staircase it's always better it's always a better option it's definitely not as fast definitely not as uh, quick but you're losing the risk of somebody camping you up here now I don't actually have many people that camp these escalators and it's in my opinion not a really good idea to camp the escalators it's a very dangerous game peeking down the escalators like this because you're opening yourself up to so many angles. People are going to see your head first and you're going to see their feet first if you're peeking like this. It's kind of it's kind of a weird angle. I don't like peeking down. It's kind of dangerous. Yeah, you can get some kills if they aren't looking, but it's just it's just dangerous. You're peeking your head out and it's a very hot spot, a high profile spot. Uh, my friend Avi likes to sit right here sometimes and just camp especially if people are coming up, especially if he's trying to protect us as we're doing a fight over there. He'll just sit here and watch the ID escalator from right here. Nobody looks this way because they're always looking down the front main hall. In my opinion, I just, I come up here and at the very end, I'm just ignoring everything back behind me. I try to get either to the front hall as quick as possible or I start running back towards the Immercom area. Um, so, let's talk about the front hall. Front hall goes all the way down to Tech Light. Tech Light is one of the highest loot places. I think it's like it's probably the top third, or it's it's within the top three best loot places on the entire map. You'll see a lot of hatchlings going there. You'll see a lot of kitted boys going there. And this is a dangerous angle right here where I'm standing. You guys see how bright that wall is? Especially if I'm unzoomed. It's For some reason, it's black right now. But if I'm unzoomed, it turns white. That's the same thing as over here. Even though this is dark, this is actually broken lighting. And this might be changed in further patches of interchange, but the lighting at the moment makes it to where if you have your shadow distance low enough, then all that stuff is just white. 
And so it's very easy to see somebody at that angle. Even if that shadow is fixed, it's still gonna be easy to see. There's not really much in the way between tech light and the idea escalator to really stop visual contact there. So when I run up the idea escalator, when I'm doing my quick run into interchange, getting into my PVP spots, I'm not going into the front hall. My friends do go into the front hall a little bit more than me, but the reason is is that they kind of know what to peek, they know where to go, they know that you know these little support beams are good to chill up on and camp from there, or they'll they'll go to different locations. They won't stay in the front hall for very long. They're just going to use it as a transportation area. Now, what I like to do, what my path would continue being again, we run into the front of interchange, or um, we run into the front of idea. We run straight over here, we run tight around the corner, go up the escalator, don't sprint, and then get up here. You'll see a lot of my streams or something. I like to run straight back towards Immercom. Or not really Immercom, but the donut above it. This is Immercom Dark Room, a pretty good room to defend from. You can check out Burger from here. I really like this area for the dark areas here. This corner is a really defendable spot because you can really limit your angles and it's hard to throw grenades into here. There's a lot of good cover that you can hide behind if a grenade does happen to go in here. And here's the little furniture jump. Again, there's no way for getting over this without jumping. There's no way. So if you hear a jump anywhere in this area, it's a good chance it's right here. But what I'll do is I'll go over to this little, this little glass ring here and I'll look down this way. Now, this is Immercom right here. This is um, a locked medical room. This actually is pretty rarely opened, I would say. Maybe 50% of raids that's actually opened. Um, but you have a great sight line from here because in the center of the mall, there's Kiba, and there's probably Killa, and there's probably a lot of Scavs, and there's Generic, and there's Mantis. Very common loot locations. Some of the hottest in the map are down there where that sun is shining. So, this is an angle where we're looking in towards the mirror of the mall. The mall is a huge mirror. It's inverted, uh, I would say, north to south. There's a line cutting west to east through it, and it's inverted. So, Ollie is a mirror of idea in a way, and Goshen is kind of sp split, you know, mirrored down the middle. And, and Ultra has a center hallway where that light is shining that splits the entire mall down the middle. And everything is pretty much mirrored on each side. Now, you'll notice some things like this shop orange is not like Jacob and Jacobs. It's slightly different. Also on the other side, if I were to teleport myself over to generic donut and look over here, this is no longer a walled off shop. This is a library or a kid's, you know, play area. So there's a lot of small shops that are changed slightly, but not very much. The overall mall is mirrored. So if you are walking on this side, you can expect a player to have have had the time to possibly be entering all the way down there at the same exact time. Think of interchange like a huge mirror, if that makes sense, what I just said. If you just ran up through idea, through the escalator, you ran all the way to here, there could easily be a player who ran through Ollie, went up the tech light escalator, went all the way through Figaro, and is now at the generic donut. So again, Immercom donut, and generic donut. You can see the glass here with the poles on it and stuff. Right here, these little balconies. You can see the glass with the poles on it all the way down there. So again, Immercom donut, generic donut, and always put yourself to the back of this wall and just scan. You can scan on zoom. Some of the stuff doesn't render in, so it's a little bit simpler, a little bit easier to see anything down there. And that bright light right now is a great example of just how easy it is to spot somebody down there because there's really nothing they can hide from. There's not a shadow or not not any cover. And same things for you. So you want to keep moving. You want to just like scan that really quick. And then you want to move over to Burger. Once you see that nothing's downstairs that you can shoot, let's go to Burger. So Burger is mirrored on the other side. Just like how there was an Immercom and a generic donut, Burger is mirrored with Papa John's. So Burger and Papa John's are some of the best, in my opinion, defendable locations in the entire map. They are easily attackable in a way, but if you play them just right, they're some of the best locations ever. This is a very cool angle here, where you can watch all the way to Papa John's. You can see the back escalator from here. Kind of hard to see, 
Um, if, if you have trouble kind of seeing what's going on, it's just dark, and I apologize for that. Just hop into a match and go along with me here, pause the video or whatever. Um, there's some bathrooms back here that you can go and dump loot in or hide in if, if a big thick boy's going past you and you don't want to fight him. Um, and Burger has a lot of levels of defense. In my opinion, if a, if a PvP group is pushing you, these places are some of the best to be in because you can hold an angle here and if you have to lose this angle here you can back up into the rest of burger you could get all the way back into these back stores right here and it's very difficult for a pmc group to breach especially when there's limited angles like let's say you back yourself all the way to the last line of defense again don't start your defense here but just you know back yourself up if you're having problems if you made mistakes in the forward parts of the defense you can back yourself all the way into this room and just hold very limited angles here. And let me just note also that hearing is huge in this map. I don't know if this is just totally subjective, but I would recommend Comtax for this map, especially if you're a slower moving player, then definitely Comtax. Comtax make footsteps, in my opinion, the easiest to hear. Again, that's definitely, uh, in my opinion, subjective as well, because I see a lot of other, I would say, pro Tarkov players playing with different headsets, but I prefer Comtax. In the end, if you use a certain headset, keep using that headset because you'll memorize the sounds of your headset. And if you start playing with different headsets in the game, you'll start to mess up your memory of certain sounds, like somebody walking or somebody reloading or somebody shuffling. Those sounds will be slightly different, and I would think that your brain probably has a slightly harder time I identifying those sounds if there's different types of reverb and equalization on them that come from wearing different headsets. So every PMC raid, I'm wearing Comtax. Um, every scav raid, I try to grab GSSHs or Comtax if I can, and uh, that's what I'm using on this map. Sound is everything. There's a lot of uh, certain stores that I would like you to walk through and realize that they have certain uh, tones to the flooring in them. This one is glass at first when you enter, but then it's wood just inside. So it's glass and then it's wood. This is the only wood in this entire area other than the cafe past Jacob and Jacobs. That cafe right there is also wood, which not really many people go in. But that means that if you hear wood or if you hear glass, it's most likely inside this shop and you can tell how deep they are in the shop by how what their footsteps sound like there's so much audible information here it's crazy just how much you can really take just from the sound in this map uh so we call this little wood glass room adjacent to burger or something we call this construction there's a few different construction rooms um, but we usually say them in context so if we called out this room or something we'd say construction across from jacobs because uh, jacobs is a pretty um, trademark. It's a it's a landmark sort of room. Trademark. And uh, Jacob's is a place where scavs like to go. Not very defendable. I wouldn't want to find myself in here at all during a fight because it's got so many angles and not much cover at all. So let's talk about J-Spot. Why do we call this J-Spot? Well, we have a friend named J and he dies here a lot, but it is a very offensive spot. You have a lot of awesome angles here, Unfortunately, you also can get killed very easily here. There's a secondary J spot, and it's right up here. You can jump up on these logs. Actually, J didn't teach this to me. Clean taught this to me. Um, but you can get up on these little, did I say logs? Or I don't even know what I said, boxes. Um, and you can watch the Kiba hallway. Yes, you have to shoot through glass now, which is kind of iffy with lower calibers, but with higher pin rifles and stuff, you can just go right through the glass like a like an M61 RSAS or something, or Vepper Hunter. Uh, you can go right through those, or Mosins. But, yeah, two different kind of spots, and also you could just peek this glass here. But you need to be very aware of the fact that, again, G uh, Kiba's right there, and Generic is right past it, right there. And a lot of players like to use the Generic Donut up there to watch down, which we will talk about in a second when we go over there. So, if you're watching down right here, let's say you're looking over towards, you know, Goshen, you've totally lost sightline of the Generic Donut up top and there could easily be a person coming to kill you. Also, you've totally lost sight of whatever is going on up there, which is also a pretty common spot for people to go. Also, middle bridge, you know, there's two escalators that lead up to this little bridge right here, and it's dangerous. There, there's a lot of different angles looking at you right here. Although you do have a great spot looking down onto uh, Kiba, I think this is one of the most dangerous spots you can be in in the entire map, as well as just being like down there. So. 
Let's talk about back escalator. So I would take my path through idea up the tech or up the idea escalator into Immercom Donut from Immercom Darkroom. I would go into Burger and I would come around this way all the way to here. This is the back escalator and it's nerfed by this generator. This area is so good that they nerfed it because it's a really good spot. So I like to lay here at the back of the escalator and kind of watch sometimes. This is a really good spot for killing players that are coming up the stairs. You can see their heads poke up and players really like to, here I'll recreate it right here. They really like to just poke their heads up like this. Like this. They'll go like this. They'll go sneaky, sneaky, beaky, sneaky. And they'll, they'll just creep up like that and they'll just poke their head up just like this. Just like this. You know what it looks like? Looks like a little, looks like a little just tip of a, tip of a, uh, uh, you know, a pickle. Just popping up right above the, uh, right above this line right here. So you can just get a little quick tap off, you know, range to maybe, maybe a hundred. I don't know what that, I don't know, probably 50 would shoot headshot right there. Let's see. Let's see where the glass. Okay. Yeah. Range to 50. I mean, you're shooting five, five, six, so it's really fast. So not much drop at all, but this is a great spot for camping people in the front. Great spot for killing Killa if he happens to be there, but you really have no cover, so be aware of that. It is a very aggressive spot. Not as aggressive as the J spot up there, but I like this spot personally, um, especially if I have friends that are able to watch the generic donut and the Immercom donut because then I can't be flanked. This is a pretty common spot, um, so use with care because I have you know, walked up through burger, maybe, maybe 30 seconds or maybe a minute late from my sprint. Maybe I spawned way back or something. I, and I was late into the ultra mall, which is where I primarily go when I spawn this map. Uh, so maybe I'm walking into burger, checking, uh, this area of back esque, looking at Papa John's and somebody's already laying here with their feet sticking out the back. So it's kind of funny. You can lay a little bit farther forward. So you have less cover but also your feet aren't sticking out or you can lay all the way back here like some players do and just totally give yourself up to getting blacked by a guy with a Mosin in burger. Um, so let's go over to Papa. Let's talk about this actually really quick. This is a fun little spot that I like. You can jump up on here, porta potty. I call this pooper spot. You can watch all the way down the front little hallway there. And uh, this used to be a little exploit. Now it's fixed, which I'm very happy about. Oh my gosh, we already have nine minutes left. You can also, I believe, jump up on these boxes, jump up on this, go around, and you have a really good angle into Papa John's. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition from two feet higher than usual. So you have a really good spot. Can you get back here? One sec. Ooh, look at that. Oh, nope, just kidding. So whenever I enter Papa, I like to go up on this little thing here and you know look above, because usually they're watching the angle like you're gonna approach from this corner. So let's say you enter Papa John's and you've come from idea. So now you need to be really worried about players because there's a high chance that the moment you enter Papa John's, that if you rushed all the way here, if there's a PMC team that rushed pretty fast, but maybe not as fast, then they're gonna be probably inside Figaro coming out to the generic donut. Especially if they're interchange goblins too and they wanna hunt people, they're gonna go upstairs. They're gonna be trying to hunt people down below as well, just like you are. So always make sure to check the generic donut. Always be careful about this spot, uh, just because of the fact that it overlooks one of the most interesting little arenas in the entire map. Oh. My shots. There's multiple sources of wood foot. What the heck, was that lightning? I guess that was lightning. There's multiple, yeah, it was. Multiple sources of wood sounds here, which can give away positions. There's Rasmussen down there. Uh, hopefully I can get a better angle to show you. There's Rasmussen. It has a wood floor. Um, generic also has a wood floor. So if you hear wood, you'll either hear it left or right. You'll know that somebody's in Rasmussen or that somebody's in generic. Uh, this crate also makes wood. So if you're on that crate, not a really good idea. I personally, the way I peek this, I never really go up to the glass. I don't like doing that because there's so many angles here. I like being as far back as I can and just really trying to limit my angles while also keeping myself away from the top. People will throw grenades. People will try to shoot through the glass. It's pretty spoopy. So make sure that you're playing this very safely. It's a great spot to kill players and I've probably killed like a hundred people from here, especially if they're walking down the, down, you know, the, 
the hallway there towards Kiba. Then I just get over over this glass and I just spray, spray, spray. But just know there's not really any hard cover up here. And that's for good reason. This would be an insane spot if there was hard cover. It'd be so hard to counter. Uh, there's a reason that there's glass here. And it's to limit players from being able to effectively peek over unless they're fully showcasing their entire body to you. So kind of interesting spot. Um, but there's a lot of areas near this that are really cold areas, really good areas that I like. I do like Figaro. I like sneaking in here. There's a good little spot back here that you could chill at and watch this angle. Um, there's also library across from here. This is one of the most important parts of the map that you need to learn, by the way, in my opinion, for, for PvP, for killing geared players in the map. This is library, and I really like this because it's very, very dark. You can look into Figaro as well as you can go into this little front area of library. And right here is a great little crouch walk over. You scan those angles there. You scan all of that, and then you know you're clear. And then you move over. You watch that second hallway. And then there's this sweet spot here. You can lay down and watch towards the tech light escalator. You might be a little bit lost right now. Basically, we're entering the area towards the tech light escalator. I'm trying to kind of go qu quickly through this because we already have six and a half minutes left. But library is very good to learn. There's not really many things I can tell you specifics about it, but this is a very good area um, for defending and a very good area for flanking. Uh, one of the most important things up here is to learn to flank and learn to counter different positions. Like, let's say if I shot somebody up in Papa John's from right here, maybe maybe he was right here and he ran back into Papa John's, I need to worry immediately about him running out the backside of Papa John's. Or, gosh, seriously, if I, get, if I have a teammate, I'm going to tell them, hey, go over to construction or go over to the wood glass room we were talking about earlier or burger especially burger burger is such a good counter against papa john's and vice versa so if i'm shooting at somebody in papa john's and i have a teammate i'm not going to tell that teammate to sit near me at all i'm going to tell my teammate to get the flip out of here and start flanking or i'm going to tell him to anchor here keep this angle while i'll we'll all go and do the flank myself so it's a really really good tactic on this map to make sure you're split up from your team and make sure that you under you all understand the map and you all know the flanking routes because again this area is like a big maze but once you learn it you can figure out those flanking routes and it's awesome uh, so talking about awesome we're gonna go over to the sushi dark and Starbucks dark hallways I don't really know what the exact call out is for them uh, the call out for this little room is light corner we just call it light corner because it's light inside of it and it's a uh, it's a corner room and here you can see Papillion right there or Papillon and generic donuts over there library and Figaro this is this is uh, sushi dark sorry and sushi dark and Starbucks dark which is again the one that's mirrored across the main hallway are some of the best places to be in the entire map so this is sushi dark very very dark rooms lots of airlocks is what I like to call them and a lot of good places to camp the front hallway. Again, the front hallway is a pretty hot spot. A lot of players like to walk down the front hallway. So Sushi Dark is one of the best places to be. Now, it's not good to just camp here. I mean, you might get players coming up here, but it's better, in my opinion, to get into a fight upstairs maybe a little bit, and then you'll bait PMCs. You'll bait geared PMCs to come up here. And I can't even tell you how many times I've camped in these places not really camped because I'm more expecting somebody to come up this way because we've been shooting so much maybe we have a fight maybe we uh, shoot some scavs downstairs or something maybe a grenade gets thrown at us by Killa and lots of players are now coming up both of the escalators and uh, you know coming through this front hallway to come investigate what's going on now if I'm up here and I want to camp somebody and kill somebody it's in the front area of the hall one of the best spots is just in these three shops. Look how many angles there are. We have angles all the way back in that shop, that shop, that shop, and the front of Sushi right here. These three shops are some of the best places to be. And this is mirrored with the Starbucks shops as well, except for FCK. That one's lit up by a light, and it's not really good to go in. But, uh, yeah, just remember these shops. Know that this is a very cold spot, a good spot to be in. And, uh... You utilize them basically utilize them a lot there's some uh, some good angles here there's some glass 
in the front of Starbucks. So if you hear glass when you're hiding in the back of the dark area, then you'll know that someone's coming. But uh, yeah, let me show you the third room. The third room's lit up, so you don't want to go in here because it's lit and uh, they're going to peek this, but they're not going to peek the other ones because they just don't want to look at something that's dark. So it's really funny. You can always sit like right here. I think the other day I actually just killed somebody right there. So we'll show that little clip just for you. And uh, yeah, crazy stuff happens here. PMCs. Two food court now. Shooting ray one. I just dropped them both. <laughs> so let's talk about these pylons here, these support beams. All of these angled support beams, you can get up on top of them. Yeah, it's pretty neat. For you new players, this is like, what the heck? I didn't know you could do that. And for all the experienced players, you're just rolling your eyes like Drewski. We already know this. But uh, from here, these are actually some crazy angles. Some of the craziest angles in the entire map. If you have a good security setup of, uh, you know, other players that are watching maybe the middle and back escalator, uh, maybe the secrets, you could make actually an impenetrable angle coverage here. If you had somebody watching from back escalator to mid, right, you had two people, one watching the secret hall over there, one watching the secret hall over there, and you had one guy right here at this, at these, at these little pylons then it is impossible for you not to see somebody coming up into the upper area of Ultra. That's right, it takes four people to watch the entire upstairs of Ultra. That means you can have a fifth kind of supporting and walking around and patrolling and waiting for a, somebody to call out a contact. So, what we like to do is have somebody set up on these little support beams here. We have a minute left, and from here, you can actually the heck am I doing? You can actually swivel your head. This is super try hard. You can swivel your head left and right, or you can have another guy, you know, sitting on that support beam and you can watch across from each other, both escalators. It is impossible to go up the escalators without the, without these support beams being able to see you. So see the escalator isn't even rendering in, but it starts right there, right there. So if somebody walks up the escalator, hundred percent, we're going to see them from here. It's kind of insane how easy it is. Plus, if the guys at the, you know, middle area get engaged, let's say the guy sitting at the back escalator right now gets engaged by somebody that came up to the middle bridge, or somebody's coming up the back escalator, or you have to fight somebody down below, then you can support them from this position. Why not support just from directly at the, or why not watch the escalators by themselves? Well, it's not really a good defendable position and you're splitting yourself, you're stretching yourself very far away from your team. And end of raid, next raid, here we go. All right, so just for an example, I just spawned outside of Ollie and I ran to this position. It only took me uh, two and a little bit over a half minutes, two and a half minutes to get to this spot right here. So about two and a half minutes into the raid, somebody could run from Ollie, from a okay spawn in Ollie, all the way to this point right here where we were chilling before. So, let's continue to talk about these spots and why they're good. So, again, let's talk about the formation that I like is you could have two people sitting on these pylons watching tech light and watching idea escalator. So, again, the tech light escalator and the idea escalator. I know that idea and Ollie escalator are the real callouts, but I like calling it tech light escalator. It makes a little bit more sense, just like it's right there. It's direct. Everybody knows where tech light is, and uh, Ollie can kind of get confusing sometimes. So, idea escalator and tech light. So, you have two people on these pylons. You have two sitting either in Figaro or sitting in Imercom Dark because you can set two people in there and they can hear secret hallways they can hear people coming up and then you have one watching the back escalator as long as you have that position set then there's no way that somebody's going to come past you there's no way which is super cool so you can control the entire upstairs of ultra now that's if you really want to have a secure position and i would only do that sort of formation if you were truly thinking that someone would come up into the top of ultra Primarily, that's at the very start of a raid. You're trying to hunt the PMCs that are trying to do some PvP and trying to kill players down below. 
Um, or that's if you've had a fight up, up here already and you know that players are going to eventually be baited up here. As, as well, Tech Light is one of the best loot locations in the entire map, so people are going to come up here most likely. It just depends on what type of player. And the players you're trying to attract are the big boys, the big PvP geared ones. And that's why we want to learn the upstairs quite a bit. Downstairs is cool. Downstairs has even more loot than is upstairs. It has Mantis, it has uh, Generic, it has Kiba, it has all these different places for loot. It has Texo, or uh, Tech, or no, 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 no. It has, yeah, it's Texo, it's over there. It's over there towards Ollie. Uh, but the thing is, is that it has all those loot locations, but it actually is, in my opinion, not as good of a defendable position. You can't really do as many flanks downstairs. There's a lot more scavs that spawn downstairs. You have a lot more connections to Goshen and Ollie and Idea. It's not exactly the best place to be at all times. In my opinion, again, this is my opinion, so you could totally tell me something different. In my opinion, the prey are always downstairs. The predators are always upstairs, especially in this area. There's really no loot up here. If you're up here in Ultra, you're a predator. You're preying on other players. There's no reason for you to be anywhere up here other than trying to just PvP and find other players and shoot on people down below. And I think that's a tactical decision made by the guys at Battle State to make not really much loot up here, make it kind of empty of loot so that this area isn't too good because it's already, in my op opinion, a very good position. It overwatches a lot of what goes on downstairs. So let's talk about the downstairs area. Let's go down. Uh, we'll talk about maybe the Ollie Escalator and Tech Light area a little bit later. So I think we've covered a decent bit of, of this area. Just, uh, I guess, overview of upstairs. Um, try to learn it. Try to learn it. I know that sounds dumb, but if you learn the upstairs very well, and you walk around the, the, the stores maybe even once and offline, you'll learn the different flanking routes and you'll be able to understand what type of movements players will make. If you go into the video I've made called Inside the Mind of Drewski, um, there's a really, really cool video I've made where I basically map out what I'm thinking of as I'm playing the game map-wise and how I kind of form ideas about where the enemies could be. And it doesn't happen all the time. It's not I'm not perfect all the time. But in that video, it was a great example of like what I thought would happen would happen in different flanking routes and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, that's a great video for an example, especially of extreme flanking routes. Like, hey, there's some people in the secret hall hallway of Idea. I'm going to run downstairs, run into Goshen, go through secret, go up secret, go behind them. Like stupid long flanks where I'm literally just risking my entire life just to flank and pull a cool flank off. But it's, it's still fun, though. So... Let's go downstairs. Let's talk about downstairs for a little bit. All right. First off, these escalators, they're loud. Don't sprint up them. Remember what I said about the escalator way over there? Yep, don't sprint up them. Don't do it. It's a bad idea. Uh, um, this is actually not a terrible position to peek from. If you are spawning outside and you rush in here very quickly, um, then always be aware of this angle right here. Same goes for you know, the stairs over there. Killa is very commonly at the start of raids, right at the front of Ultra. So be, be ready for a Killa if you run up here. Um, also be ready for possible players watching from uh, Tech Light Escalator or Idea Escalator. And um, there's kind of a cool angle here and kind of a good camping spot. I like this room called Spiel. I've never actually looked at the name before, but I really like Spiel. And although it does require a little jump here, there's kind of a cool spot that you can, if if you know that somebody's about to come in the ultra front, kind of a cool spot here. You can sit here and watch that. I bet if you did some parkour, you could get up on that metal thing right there, or maybe, I don't know, jump up on those things if you really wanted to break your legs. I don't want to right now because I have no meds. But, uh, yeah, there's some cool spots up here that you could try out and get used to. And also, you can quickly just go like that. And you're, but you're back down to normal, but there's a, you know, some good, noteworthy, interesting little positions that they've added there. Um, so the front area, let's talk about this. These front plates are God. You kind of want to hide behind them at all times if you're up here. And uh, you should be very scared if you're right here. This is a very hot area. You kind of want to get through this as quick as possible. Same goes for the main hall. Super dangerous spot. If you're right here, the most likely place that PMCs are going to kill you is either 
that way or maybe back behind you, as well as the top of the back escalator right there. They could be just laying down there like we were doing earlier and able to shoot you so gosh darn easily. Now, there's Mantis, which is a good um, a good medical place to go if you're kind of a lower level player. But if you're a higher, if you're like level 25 plus, I wouldn't even go into Mantis. It's a very hard shop to get into without opening yourself up to really hot positions. And so I wouldn't even go into Mantis. I think the moment you come up these stairs, you either, either choose to go left or to go right. Now, I like going right. I think right's the better place to go because these are very important shops up here. Uh, the shop to your left spawns cowboy hats and Yushankas because there's a lot of mannequins in here. And that's why I call this room cowboy. I think it's actually called Levi's or something. Let me see, or, or Revi Revi's, Revi's, yeah. So I call this cowboy even though it's called Revise, call it whatever you want. That's just what I have it in my brain, I guess. And this is sports, um, which I like to call gym. So cowboy and gym, these are very good stores to kind of anchor yourself in. These very cold stores. Uh, I like these places because they're stealthy. They have good cover. They're dark. They also don't have much glass or anything. I really like rushing into the front of Ultra, coming over here, and camping right beside these little bicycles. Great spot to camp. You can hear all the way down into Ollie. You can sit here and wait for somebody. You can peek the angle here. Great spots. Great spots to counter people at the generic donut. Which again, that area over there, one of the most dangerous spots in the entire map to go. So if you're in these areas that are dark around the, the danger spot, you're like... I don't know, you're like a lion waiting in tall grass for the gazelles to go get water. That's the that's the metaphor I'm going to make here. Like, <laughs> you're, you're seriously just waiting for people to go get loot, and then you're waiting to kill them as they come out from getting loot. Or you're waiting for a fight to happen, and then you're waiting for you to be the third party, which is super fun. So, these are good places to approach this area from. Um, Adik is also pretty good. It has some good angles. I really like Adik for this angle right here, which watches into Ollie. You can lay down and watch into Ollie. Again, laying down spots are meta because you can just have zero recoil in your gun. Let's look at the recoil difference between me shooting uh, while standing. You know, that was two shots right there. You could see the shot go way back into the wall and then me laying down. Hopefully I can spray two again. Yeah. See the difference? It was like four times the recoil when I was standing up, which is crazy. Um, but nonetheless, a deke has some good spots in it. Um, just be aware that the f the closer you get to generic, in my opinion, the weaker a deke gets in terms of good positioning. And then there's Rasmussen. Rasmussen is a super common place for players to go, even though I think it's terrible. It's terrible. I really think that it, this is your last resort. And unfortunately, it's whoever made Interchange, whoever designed Interchange is a genius because they knew that Rasmussen was going to be one of the most trafficked shops, or this this little path here was going to be one of the most trafficked shops in the entire map. And uh, it's just, ugh, they, they, really, they really just did a good job here. So um, let me talk about this actually really quick. Let me go back to Adik and uh, show you. So... There's a barricade here. There's a barricade, and it makes players walk out into this area here. A lot of players will come and walk this way because they don't want to walk into Rasmussen. They just choose, hey, there's glass there, there's wood there. I don't want to go into there. So if you're if you're a smart player and you're choosing not to walk in Rasmussen because it's a bad idea, unless you're literally sneak walking the whole way, then you go over here. And remember that laying down spot in Adik? It watches this angle so well, so well. Plus, if a player instead doesn't walk down this hallway to get at this point right here, but they were to go around underneath the tech light escalator and go all the way around to gym or cowboy, then you're gonna be able to hear them and you've still got a good position to ambush them from. Like you're laying on that box there, you basically got this height and you're just able to watch right there. So, and you're in the dark. So just know that that's a really good angle Again, I'm not saying run into the map and lay at these angles. I don't think you'll be successful that way. To be an interchange goblin, you kind of have to lurk around. You have to hunt people. You have to hear firefights, run towards those firefights, and then crouch walk and sneak your freaking way up close to them. 
And the more you know the map, the more you'll guess, the more you'll be able to understand where maybe that firefight happened. And uh, sounds are everything. Have your volume to nice level when you play this map. Uh, just because then you'll be able to hear a little bit easier. But Rasmussen is crazy dangerous, and let's talk about why. First off, glass. First off, weapons case. Sometimes a graphics card, GM count, you know, good, good, good loot spawns here. Good stuff. But the problem is, you just walked into the most dangerous area in the entire map, and you were just walking on wood the whole time. You're audible from there. You're audible from those boxes. You're audible from those. You're audible from inside Papa John's. You're audible from inside Generic. You're audible from inside Kiba. You're audible from inside Avocado. You just announce yourself to the whole friggin' map, and they all know exactly where you are. Walking on wood reaches farther distances than walking on concrete, I believe, and you instantly just identified where you are. Because if people hear wood, they either go, okay, they're in generic, or they're in Rasmussen. And they can just hear, they have two ears, they have stereo headsets, they're going to be able to tell the difference. So, if you're walking through Rasmussen, man, be careful, because it's so easy to get camped from people up there, so easy to get heard from people in Avocado, which is a great position to be in. It's just not a good spot to go. So I like to walk around a deke. If I'm entering this area, I like to quickly run back. Like, let's say if I'm entering from Ollie, for example. If I'm entering from Ollie, I'm not going to walk into Rasmussen. I'm going to check Jim. I'm going to peek that spot in a deke just like this. I'm going to peek it. And then I know that I'm probably relatively clear. So I'm going to walk this way. I'm going to check the glass up at the top of Generic Donut first. Honestly... You really want to check, like, the hallway, too. There's a lot to check here. This is a very dangerous area. You want to kind of make sure that no players are here beforehand. And then avoid this glass on the floor. And then you're just going to sprint run back here. Because this is a pretty good spot. You're, you're a lot safer here than you were two seconds ago over there. You're in a dark spot. You've got avocado right beside you, which is a great store to camp in. It's a good cold store. And uh, here is also a very good spot. This is called cardboard. We call cardboard... It's the call out for a lot of the cardboard box jump ups in the map and this is a very very good spot to be in It's kind of hard to kill people at cardboard from upstairs because the per the cardboard person's gonna hear you moving around upstairs And you have to peek a lot more than he does I feel like it's a lot easier to watch people upstairs than it is to shoot at people at cardboard because it's so dark right here He can even get lower and kind of peek wider angles too and he can hear and camp for people coming from Asmussen killed a lot of people at this angle right here um and you can see all the way down Kiba Mantis generic over here uh you can see down the generic hall a little bit you can see into avocado a little bit great spot in my opinion it's kind of hot experienced players will check this but most players won't so or even in firefights, especially in firefights, a lot of these places become even more powerful. Camping here isn't really a great idea, but if there's a firefight and you expect players in the area at a certain point, like if you expect players to come around the corner of Kiba, if you're hearing a firefight or if your friend calls it out, these places are good to go. Avocado. This place is awesome. Um, so if I approach Ultra from Goshen, I'm going to walk down this hallway and into avocado. I'm going to hug this back wall and I'm going to check generic donut from here. Again, I, I, I feel like I'm playing like a wuss, but really all it's all we're doing is just trying to utilize the dark shadows and stuff to our advantage and really make sure that we are in as dark of places as possible and that we're limiting our angles as much as possible. But if you have a sharp angle like this, you have a little really acute angle into a location like this, it's one of the best places to be. It's generally a good rule. If you have a sharp angle into a hot spot where players are going to go, then that is a generally good spot in my opinion. So again, a sharp angle means like, you know, we we don't really have too much to look at. We can focus all of our eyes, all of our focus can be on this little area right here. There's usually a lot of scavs. There's usually a lot of players going to Kiba. This is a good spot to be. Um, just make sure that if you are in a duos or above, then have a person right here watching all the way to the back. I also like this little trash bag right here just for some cover, for some clutter and concealment. Makes it a little bit harder to spot a PMC uh, if you're over there at the Goshen Tents. Uh, so let's talk about the loot. So Generic has okay loot. It has a gold chain spawn right on this bed. It's not... Oh, wait, wait, was it there? No, it's... Wait, there's a stain. There's a stain. It looked like a gold chain. 
There's an armor spawn that maybe, maybe once in a blue moon, honestly, spawns right there. Ooh, that's a nice scope. Um, there's weapons crate, weapons case, and another weapons case on the table. There's some stuff, like an AK muzzle that spawns on the shelves. Not really crazy good loot. I think this loot has honestly been nerfed in the past. Oh, there's also a little AK-74 spawn that's on that table um, that is like... How it, maybe last patch it was a 20% chance of spawning, I'd say. Usually an AK-74 with like 30 rounds of PS in it. So as a scav, always go and check that. Um, and then there's Kiba. This is the most dangerous area in the entire map by far. 100%. 100% this right here. This spot right here. You have so many loot rooms. You have so many players coming to this door right here. And there's a reason that there's two doors. Because it takes a freaking long time to unlock. You have to sit here and go boop, 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 boop. And then you have to spam that, and then you have to unlock this one, and boom, you're headshot, you're dead. So make sure you clear this area very well before you go for the doors. Um, the only cover you have is these middle cardboard boxes. There's a reason that they move the doors of Brutal over there. There's a reason that the Adik doors are over there. There's a reason that the generic doors are so far away. Whenever you enter this area, you are committing to go into Kiba. And honestly, this is just such a scary spot to be in because you have the angles above generic donut. You have all of generic whole area. You have all of the front halls. So you have J spot up there. Remember how J spot was really good, but it was also very dangerous because see how easy it is to look up there. But it's just another angle that can see you right now. There's a lot of different places all the way down towards the Emercom donut lower area down there. The Keep is all glass and the glass is not bulletproof. I don't know if I could prove that. I don't I don't know if the bullet holes are going through. Kind of an interesting thing. That newspaper goes, you know, yeah, you guys are seeing what, the, what I'm seeing, right? Yeah, kind of interesting. That actually is really weird. But the, but this blocks it. That's really weird. That's like a, that's like an illusion. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't even know what to tell you here. Um, just try to get through this as fast as possible. Don't stay here. Don't defend. If somebody upstairs shoots at you, immediately expect that somebody's going to be up at the other side. Because I've had so many times where I'm a bad guy, right? Jay's up there. I'm up there. And Jay says, hey, Drew, I see some people in Kiba. Maybe I wasn't looking or maybe I was in Papa John's or something. He says, maybe I, I see, Drew, I see some people in the Kiba hallway. I'm immediately going to run a generic donut. He's immediately going to start shooting. They're going to take cover. They're going to go, oh my gosh, somebody's shooting from up there. I'm going to take cover right here. And then they're going to get headshot from me watching them in the back. We literally had an example of this just a few days ago. I'll show it right now. There's tons of them. Keep a halt, AV. Dropped one. They're out in front of corner Kiba, corner outside corner Kiba. Gotcha. Okay. Watch out, crying grenade. Yeah, shit. Careful. Where it exactly? Oh, I see one. Um, one below, one down. Uh, I got, I got the one down in front of a deke. Generic donut. Nades on him. He ran out. Which way did he go? He's in the boxes. Right. Boxes middle. Got him. He's done. He's done. Nice. Okay. And Be that's careful. All she wrote. So, another dangerous area is right here in the middle. Nope. Yep. They're they're right below middle. Right there. They're very very. Dropped very one. Right. Copy. Inside or outside? I think. Oh, got him! Got him! Got him! I mean, a lot of players also like to, for some reason, defend this spot, which is also a terrible spot to defend. Yeah, there's a lot of cover. You know why there's a lot of cover? Because this is a terrible spot to be in. A lot of scavs spawn. Killa might pop out and ambush you. This is just not a good place to be. Middle escalator can see you. J spot. Opposite J spot. Generic donut. Imercom donut. Goshen. And, uh, yeah. This is just not a very good place to be in at all um it's all i can really say basically think of these as hot zones you want to get through these like there's not really a strategy to these places other than just understand that there's places and interchange that you want to run through there's places that you want to stay at and sneak through and this is a place that you just want to run right through you never want to be here if you're here you're making a mistake that's literally the line unless there's a body that you killed that you have to loot don't go in these places. There's literally no reason to go here. There's always another way. Unless you're trying to sprint to the map or something. I wouldn't even go here if I was sprinting to the map. There's no reason you should be here. Unless you have to absolutely be here. So, 
yeah, don't go. Uh, Mantis, I don't, I don't like Mantis. It doesn't have much loot. I go in there if I'm. Uh, the only reason I go in there is if I'm a scav. I've been shot and I need a bandage. Um, it's kind of a maze. I honestly, I don't really like it just because the ex the exits to Mantis can be camped from upstairs so easily. Um, and I've killed a lot of players just by trapping them in Mantis. So not really a good place to be. Um, doesn't really have great loot, in my opinion. So let's go on to Goshen. Uh, this is an interesting room. I don't really have a, a name for this, but it's called Pretty Lights. I like to mid-combat. Shoot that glass there. Makes it a little bit easier to get inside this room. I really like this room because you can walk all the way to the corner of it or sneak walk back here, and you can listen extremely well into generic and Kiba and call out uh, positions of bad guys to your friends. You can even hear all the way back into Avocado. Um, if I'm finding somebody in Avocado, that's the move I would do. I would go through that glass and then I would start peeking this right here as one of my friends or something is peeking from generic donut. We actually did this exact attack just a few days ago as well. <laughs> all right, so. Goshen Tents. This is a dangerous area, but it's also a very good area for camping. I've been killed here. There's a lot of good spots you can sit at. There's a lot of bad spots you can sit at. Um, basically, know that a lot of scavs like this area. I don't like this hard tent, but what I do like is jumping up on all of this stuff here. It's really fun. You can get to a lot of weird places here. Um, a very good spot to camp. Anybody coming from the generic area is right here at this tent. You can pop up and shoot them. I've been killed from this exact position before, and I learned from that, and this is an awesome place to be. Um, secondly, there's a weird jump that you can do. You could also, actually, you could lay down and uh, watch. It's a kind of a weird lay down. Wait, can you lay down? Yeah, you can lay down and watch the front stairs from here, middle-esque, things like that. It's a pretty dark area, but do know there's a lot of brightness behind you. So if you're engaging somebody in Goshen, you're just silhouetting like crazy. Um, but watch this jump. It's kind of cool. Uh, bada bing. No, I went through it. If you do... Oh! Okay. Oh. <laughs> we almost missed that. Um, if you do that jump and you do it correctly, unlike I just did, then you can get up on the tent, on that tent, and it's kind of weird. Interesting spot. I'm not going to try it too much, but you can try it out yourself. There we go. And from here, if you feel extra risky, you can't really do anything from here other than just chill and peek into Goshen at a crazy angle. But if you really want the craziest of angles... Oh, I missed it. Damn. You can get up to that little spot right there, and then you can just chill up there. It's a lot harder to get to, a lot less um, reasonable and rational. But if you have the time and the dedication, you can definitely get up there. A lot of places to climb here. Look at this. You can jump over this. You definitely can't get up that. But there's a lot of places that you can climb here. So when you clear this area, make sure to be looking up. Like, where could players be? Where could players be? You know where a player could be? Right up at the top of that porta potty You can climb this little cardboard box. Get up to the top of the porta potty Is this still feasible? Yes, it is. Holy crap. Okay, um... Dad I did uh, <laughs> yep okay so a lot of different places there battle state please fix um let's go back to Immercom donut and talk about it a little bit before we go into ultra so unlike generic where the only way to get from generic to goshen area is to go through that that wooden cafe right beside the tents let's actually go back there really quick just to show you it um so the quickest way to go from generic to Goshen is this cafe right here. So generic is just down there. We're going to walk from generic. We're going to go in between those two things. We're going to walk right here. We're going to walk in a cafe and out through that tent. So it's a pretty far walk. You can see like generic is way down there. Generic is the door is just to the right of that red light there. So let's go back to the opposite side where it's mirrored but not mirrored exactly. It's a broken mirror. It's different a little bit. All of Interchange is mirrored, but slightly altered on each side. And again, whoever designed this map, I wanna have your babies. Hit me up. You know, I've got my phone number, I got my Twitter. Your your map designer is just oh, so good. All right, so let's talk about Emercom Donut and then we'll go back to, all right, no, I just made a statement about cafe. All right, so 
Remember how you had to walk from generic to cafe, and it was a pretty far walk. Well, uh, the opposite of, or the opposite of generic is this, which is Costin. And look how far it is from from Costin to go into Goshen. You don't have to walk all the way to cafe. You just walk right through Bizarro, or you walk right through this bathroom connector, and that's Goshen right there. That's all of Goshen. So this bathroom I really like because it's a very um, nice shortcut. It's really dark. Not a lot of players know about it, especially if you close the door. It just looks like another, like, look at that. No new player is going to think that that's an unlockable door. They're going to be like, what is this? They're going to see it's a breach, and then they're going to go into this and be like, eh, it's probably just another breach. And then they're not going to try that door. So if you want a good spot to kind of sneak around in, also check out the angles here. Look at the angles you can get from here. Looking into Immercom Donut, looking at the top of Immercom Donut. Can you see? Actually, wait, where's the, where's the top of Immercom Donut? I don't, uh, other than that, I don't think you can really... Can you see anything? No, you actually can't. Okay, you can't see the top of Immercom Donut. I was wrong. But you can see all of Immercom. Uh, this is what we call, just to the right of that bathroom, library. There's a library upstairs as well, but it's just kind of within context. Gun weapon case there. Uh, this is also a good spot. I like sitting at the back of this and watching the Mantis hallway like this. Just like we do with the avocado peak. This is the opposite of avocado. So no wonder I like this room. It's a really, really good peek into the main hallway from here. Again, we're always putting our back to a wall. Always hugging the dark rooms that don't have any wood or don't have any glass in them. Um, and, and, and just that's the way to win interchange. Honestly, keep your back to a wall. Know the areas. Know the flanking routes. Stay in the dark rooms. Run through the, the, the hot areas. And sneak around. Be a freaking goblin, boys. Um, Immercom Donut is okay. It's very open, but if you are 100% okay with the fact that people might be camping upstairs, which they usually don't on Immercom Donut, and you can hear them if they come close to the glass, um, you're also right beside the main route from Idea into Ultra, but you can easily take cover and you know defend a little bit from there. Especially like in this room, if you run into this room, hey, graphics card. Um, if you run into this room, then you're pretty pretty covered up, pretty camoed and concealed. Um, but you can jump up here and you can watch all the way down to Kiba. So this is an interesting spot. Not many people that are going and checking Kiba are going to look all the way down here unless they're very experienced players. If they're very experienced players, they're going to check every angle. So yeah, Immercom Donut, it's okay for that little piece of cover right there, that little jump up. Costin. Not a really room I like being in. It's kind of lit up. Uh, a lot of silhouetting can be done there. It's okay in terms of cover, but eh. Um, so first, before we go into Goshen, we're going to talk about the secret stairs. So if you ever want to go upstairs, but you don't want to take those main escalators, let's talk about this. So I just went from Ultra to Goshen. This is Goshen. Um, that's where the tents were. That's where we were jumping up on that tent and getting the crazy angle into Goshen. So remember, that is all Ultra over there. That's all Ultra. This is all Goshen. Now, in Goshen, on both sides, there's these doors. And if we look, uh, can I see it from here? There's those doors way over there. You see those tan orange doors with the two windows? They're the same. They're the same. It's mirrored, right? These are some of the best routes that you can go on in the entire map. I really like these spots if you're... A audio freak and you can hear very well like I can I will boast about my ability to hear things because my friends always go what the flip Drewski how did you know something was there and I'm like I have tinnitus because of Tarkov um, basically I like these places a lot because they're very tight-knit rooms they also have some loot in them like computer stuff and I usually can I usually can beat players in these rooms. I th I think it's just because if you are staying slow, you're staying quiet, you can ambush players really, really well here, and uh, you'll have a good time. We'll have a really good time. So, how to get to the upstairs, the secret way. You go through, you know, from Goshen, you go straight into this room, and you're just going to cut straight into the back. You're going to go, it's a straight line. From Goshen in, it's a straight line through all these doors, and then you're at these stairs. And these stairs are the secret stairs. And these are on the uh, idea side of the map. So these are called the idea secret stairs. Be careful going up these because there might be a player coming down. I have never ran into a player 
on the stairs themselves because players usually just walk right through them. They don't sneak up them. There's so many stairs, they get bored and they just walk right up. So players never really chill around there. Then you can check these angles. Then, you, then you're back into the upstairs of, uh, of Ultra. And I would say that the secret stairs are almost in every case other than right as you spawn in and you want to get upstairs as fast as possible. The secret stairs are always better places to use to get upstairs or downstairs than the main escalators. The main escalators are really spoopy, and they're not good, and I don't like them. And, uh, I don't know, there's not good places to go. So, let's talk about Goshen. I think Goshen is one of the hardest places to go in, because it's got a lot of lights. It's got a lot of dynamic lighting to it, a lot of sounds, generators. There's usually scavs here. Walking down the middle from Ultra. And uh, Goshen, I don't know if I have many strategies for Goshen. I think Goshen basically never walk down this main road, this main path. It's literally a road. Look, there's tire marks. Never walk down the main path. Always go through the sides. Goshen has, you know, these two big garage doors. It has this one and it has one over to the right. But don't even use those. Those are visible all the way from Ultra. They're visible all the way from that checkpoint area where the, all those cars are and stuff, all those trucks. And there's doors there, 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 and then there's more doors there, 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 and there, like all the way through the back. So there's no reason for you to go through these really big open garage doors. And uh, I just I just don't know why people really like these, really like walking through these. They're just not good places to go through, unless you're really cocky and confident. Um, there's a lot of angles that can see you. This is what I call the Goshen checkpoint. There's a lot of trucks here, a lot of different uh, places to kind of be sneaky. Um, basically, if I'm here, I'm very scared of people coming from power plant down that hallway. Or I'm very scared of people coming down that hallway from the southeast extract. Um, not as scared of players coming from Goshen because, again, if they come through those garage doors, well, they've got like very easy places for me to see them. Um, and it's very easy to flank them if I want to. So I'm not too worried about that. If I'm in this area, I'm usually crouch walking and sneaking and watching that angle, making sure nobody's that way. And also, you know, making sure nobody's that way. Don't really want to be here for too long just because there's so many different angles. And wow, it's already been 30 minutes. Holy crap. And uh, yeah, don't really want to be here for too long. Kind of a hot area. You want to get through here as fast as possible. Goshen, it's kind of the same with the rest of Goshen. There's not much loot in Goshen other than some car batteries, uh, Selua, though, some car batteries, some Tashankas, maybe some odds and ends, but not really much loot in Goshen. Um, that back hallway is one of the, the scarier places. That's one of actually a pretty hot location as well. I don't really like the back hallways. I like walking through Goshen itself instead of the back hallway. Um, so, usual path that I take from Ultra to get to Southeast is to walk through this area here, through all of these dark areas. I try to stay in the shadows as much as I can. Very common car battery spawns along this shelf here. And then we're going to go into the Goshen Light Room, I like to call it, because it's got a lot of light up there. And then we're out to Southeast. This is a pretty common area that I like to, or that I accidentally run into players sometimes. Players will like to sit around here quite a bit, loot these containers, even though I've never even looted them. I think there's my, probably like a weapons case somewhere within them. Um, there's also some good jumpy spots here. Oh, wait, let me see. One sec. Yeah, there you go. Some good jumpy spots. You can get up on some of the containers up here. Just walk around like that one. You can probably get up on top of those, although it's well lit. Um, if you see that shelf over there, here, actually, let me get up, let me get up here, show you guys something. I don't really want to run to it just because I don't want to waste your time. You see that shelf? You can get up on that forklift, on the front of the forklift, on that box, then you jump to the top of the forklift, then you can jump onto that shelf and you can get up all the way to the top, then you can lay down at the top, long ways on the shelf. You can lay down and watch all the way down here. I have killed so many players from that spot, I can't even imagine how many players thought I was hacking because they just got one tapped when they walked in this door from 200 meters away. Their friends just hear nothing, they just hear the thwack and that's it. So uh, Southeast, Southeast is sketchy. Southeast is one of the most dangerous spots on the map. It's the definitely the most dangerous spot outside 
of the uh, actual mall itself. After this, we'll go into Ollie um, after this restart, but we'll use these seven minutes to talk about Southeast in itself. So first off, um, a lot of scavs like to spawn here. So when you come up here, you need to be aware of scavs possibly walking on that ramp across. They will shoot you from that angle. It's kind of nuts. You need to be able to check this area. I usually just check the Ollie area there and watch this angle like this. And you can watch all the way down to the end of the little up, upper platform here. Um, exit campers are most common around the southeast extract. And I'll show you one of the places that I don't really like going up here. I think it's kind of cheap. And it's almost so cheap that I don't like it. it it's, it's actually one of the spots that I don't like going to. Um, but also, it's very hot. It's very easy to get shot up here. And I don't like dying. I like... I will I will not even get into a fight if I know I'll die in the fight. I, I play very passively. And so I don't like going up here, but a lot of players do. And a lot of players are very successful at killing players up here because not a lot of players know that you can even get up on this area of the roof. It's wood for some reason instead of metal, which I kind of wish it was metal. It'd make a little bit more sense. Um, but you're very audible. You're very open but you've got so many angles. And one third, maybe even one fifth of the Tarkov player base that regularly plays Interchange even knows that this is a thing. You can jump over here, have a little bit better cover, because um, you could like, let's say lay down and just, you know, the angles are a little bit more limited, but man, you're playing very offensively if you're over here. Oh, nope, nope, I knew I wasn't gonna make it. So this is the Southeast ramp. Uh, We'll not even talk about Ollie yet. We'll come back to this area. If you're running down southeast ramp from both sides, so you see how that fence connects right there at the ramp? Same thing here. The fence connects. Best way to run down the ramp is just to serpentine the flipping heck out of this ramp and then jump over right here at the fence and jump over. You want to get out of the ramp as quick as possible. It's a huge open area. There is zero cover and your profile, your silhouette is insane. You're a dark camouflaged man on a white gray background. It's very easy to see you. You want to get out of there as quick as possible. Um, my favorite routes towards the extract are from here, from that drop down, I would run along the right side of the highway all the way until the extract. If I were to jump down from the left ramp I would run one sec I would run I'm trying to get to where I would be I would run behind this truck and again we're jumping from that spot right there we would jump down onto the grass we would run against this truck either go left into that hole or through here and then use the trench this trench is a little bit more dangerous than going against the back wall though so my friends like to use this path a lot. I'm not a huge fan of it, but if they're doing it, I'll do it too, just because I have them there to protect me. It's kind of harder to ambush a group of, you know, two or three people instead of just one. But if I'm solo, I'll always take that back route all the way against the back wall and then go into the extract. Um, here, the most common spots I see extract campers sitting at is those bushes or the hill right at the corner, the very back corner. There's usually um, some extract campers there. So just be careful when you're over here, guys. Very dangerous spot. I wouldn't ever run within uh, these roads. Basically, think of this ring as a ring of death. The closer you get into the center of these flags is, uh, is the more likely you will die, even if you're in these bushes. You know, honestly, good, good extract camping spot would be these bushes because nobody checks these when they come walking out, and you'd be able to hear a lot from here and see a lot from here. Um, another note about Southeast Extract and the area around it, and again, I wish I could cut cover everything, but I really can't. Um, one of the most common places that people will approach the Southeast Extract is also against this blue wall. And they'll not come from, from this actual ramp at all. They'll come from the bottom there, or most likely underneath Ollie. They'll go down the generic hole at the bottom of the generic donut, and that area leads to the parking garage that comes out of that hole right there. And then they'll walk against the fence and they'll come up here and they'll walk all the way to the edge. We've had some fights here where we killed, I think four total teams. Um, in one raid, we killed four teams. It was me and Avi. We killed four 
different groups of people. They, they were scavs and PMCs, but they all tried this extract. And we weren't camping. We came up on the southeast extract. We killed a guy here, and then we killed a guy that was also trying to kill him. And then these scavs came up this way, and it was a good time. But we ended up with, like, four different teams killed at this one spot because they were all attempting this extract to southeast, which was kind of nuts. What else about the southeast area? I'm not really sure. Oh, let me talk about, we have two minutes. Um, so in Goshen, near that checkpoint where, you know, there was the trucks and I was saying it was a pretty hot area. There is at the very back of that checkpoint, a wooden ramp. And the wooden ramp is a stairwell that goes down into the garage. And I don't have time right now. I'll probably show you in the next minute. But that garage goes downstairs. And it's a crazy flanking route. So I'm trying to get the angle for you really quick. Let me see if I can jump this and then jump that. I don't know if I can make this jump. Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay, so all the way down. Wow, that's a very simplified view of Goshen. Holy crap, Nikita fix. Um, all the way down at the... The... <laughs> I'm confused at what I'm looking at of the middle checkpoint, which is supposed to be there on the right side of it. There's that stairwell that's behind some chain link fences. It's a wooden stairwell. It brings you down into the underbelly, the under garage of the back end of the uh, shopping mall. And that's a very good flanking route. If someone happens to be up on Southeast and you tried to extract through, you know, this door or you tried to extract through, I don't know, anywhere, then you can go back into Goshen, go into that stairwell go down and then you can walk out you know through the road this way or you could walk through all the way to this area of the parking garage and there's a hole in the parking garage down this way you could come out here into this area of the forest and then you could snipe them and flank them um we attempted that flank the other day but the other team that we were fighting against unfortunately just ran away and so we weren't able to get them but if the team was you know playing it slow then we were they, we would be able to get that flank off and it would have worked. All right, my voice is almost gone from talking for almost 80 minutes straight now. Now we're gonna go into Ollie. Wow, very convenient spawn. We actually can showcase exactly what I was talking about. So uh, let's say you shoot somebody up here and they run up this southeast extract ramp or something and you wanna flank them because they know that you're down here and they're up there, they're gonna try to watch you. You don't need to go up the ramp. You just run back this way. There's a grenade box in that tent, by the way. And just over here, you'll find the wooden stairs. And yeah, they're wood, they're kinda loud, but not many people camp, you know, Goshen checkpoint. So you're, I, I've never actually been ambushed going up these stairs. You kinda have to focus on what you're stepping on because they're kinda weird, they're kinda spoopy stairs, but now you're up here. Now you're in Goshen. And now the guy who you were just getting shot at from up on the platform is going to be most likely right here at the fence looking down trying to still find you. So yeah, good times, good flanks, good memes. So next, Ollie. Part three is Ollie. Um, Ollie is one of my favorite spots. I think it's one of the spots that... A player could master the most I think it's one of the most um, active spots on the map and it's recently become even more active thanks to the hideout because there's a lot of hideout loot in Ollie so Ollie is one of the most interesting places and I think it's also one of the places where you can really learn a lot about player movement and how players usually go into Ollie so if a player is coming from Goshen and they want to go into Ollie they'll go through here They'll enter through the Ollie offices, go towards the bathroom area of the Ollie offices, and then they'll go into Ollie. Um, if they're exiting or entering Ollie and trying to either get to Southeast or they're coming from Southeast, they're not gonna go through that way I just mentioned. They're going to go through this garage door up here on our right. And this is one of the most common spots in the entire map. I would say if, you know, 10 PMCs survive an interchange raid, about maybe four, three to four of them will go through this exact spot right here. They will leave footprints right here because they'll always jump out of this spot and go down the ramp towards the Southeast extract. So this area right here is pretty common um, just because, you know, a lot of players like to roam through here and go out that extract. 
a lot of fights have happened here in my opinion and there's a lot of flanking routes here as well um there's also a lot of audible um, opportunities here if you keep your ears open here you can hear a lot you can get a lot of info you can flank players it's kind of awesome this is what we call the ollie back hall I get a lot of flanking routes. If somebody's down that back hall, I could flank into Ollie or I could flank outside. Or if somebody's outside and my friend is on the ramp right here shooting at them or something, I could flank through the inside and go up to that garage door that you can see the light coming out of and shoot them from there. I've done all those things a few times and so have a lot of other players in this game. This is Ollie Light Room. Uh, this room is a very visible visible room you kind of want to get through this room as fast as possible there's really not much loot there's sometimes things like there or in this basket there could be car batteries um, but you want to get through here as fast as possible and get into ollie now i'm going to stop here before i cut into path a which is how i would enter ollie if i spawned at southeast let's act like i spawned at southeast this raid and this is going to be path a first we're going to talk about path B really quick and then we're going to come back to path A and why this path is good but first off we're going to go to path B so if we're in path B we're going to walk into Ollie up the southeast ramp we're going to come into here and we're going to run all the way back to the Ollie office's back door and the Ollie office's back door and the Ollie offices themselves are really fun because you can hear throughout the entire thing. If you're at one end of the Ollie offices, if you have your headset turned up enough, if you have a good headset, if you have a, also a headset in game, you can hear all the way through the offices. So check this angle here, make sure nobody's chilling in here. And my first actual video of interchange, the thumbnail was right here, fun fact. Or maybe it was, no, I think it was actually right here. It was right here. Um, but, uh, this room is called the Ollie Office's Bathrooms. There's a women's bathroom there and a men's bathroom. The women's is always spawned closed. And the men's, oh wait, sorry. The women's is always spawned open. And the men's, sorry, I totally thought that was a woman. Uh, <laughs> I guess I guess I was, uh, and I'm not, I'm not even going to make that joke. Um, so all the doors will spawn open all the same so if you see a door like this that's opened on both sides like like right now we haven't changed any doors in the entire map other than maybe we open the back door of i don't even know but no we didn't we didn't so all of these doors if you memorize the way that these doors are opened or that they're closed you can tell if a player has changed them because these doors don't spawn randomly these two doors will always spawn open so if you see this if you peek outside of ollie if you're over there and you peek this door and this door is like this you immediately know a player has been here because they've touched the doors so these doors are always closed these doors are always both open one of those doors is open that door is always open that doors is always closed especially if you see the men's bathroom open dude you need to go clear that there's no reason for them someone to go in there unless they went in there and they're hiding in there and waiting for you right now so yeah this is a very defendable position and this is again route b into ollie and so i would come into the ollie offices go into the ollie bathroom room i would right here peek the long way make sure nobody's there if there's any scavs i would get rid of those scavs and then i would run over to this right door i would peek down this way just to make sure unless a friend is also going through lightroom just to make sure nobody's coming because i can see right there that glowing kind of brighter green that's the entrance to the light room we were talking about earlier that's where we ended our route a um and at this angle here i would get up to cardboard this is cardboard just like we have a cardboard in generic donut we have a cardboard in ollie and ollie's cardboard can see quite a bit it can see to the back of ollie which is kind of lit up if you um point your point of view at an angle for some reason interesting exploit uh, you can see the front of Ollie. You can see anybody coming from Ultra through this little line right here. You can see anybody come up the stairs from this line right here. So it's a pretty good angle. You're also in the dark. You also have some cover. It's kind of hard to grenade you. You can also see people down there. Uh, if you really are committed to fighting people in Ultra, you can lay down here, have a good uh, recoilless position there. Um, I like just chilling back here and leaning around this corner, though. I try to stay... Again, I, I, I will always take cover over awareness and, and visibility and sight lines. I like to rely on my hearing a lot more, 
which very fortunately you can hear through walls in this game. So if someone's walking in the hallway right here, you're going to be able to hear them and they're going to be able to hear you, which a lot of people don't realize. Walls don't deafen sound in this game. It's only elevation. It's only levels. Halfway down that escalator, I'm not going to be able to hear you walking up the escalator anymore. If you're walking downstairs, unless you're directly underneath me or you're directly over me, I'm not going to be able to hear you either at all. So kind of interesting stuff. Um, so if I were to approach Ollie and I went through the route Bravo, route B, I would use this cardboard, I'd scan the area. If the, nobody's there, if nobody's coming up the front of Ollie, then I'm going to leave this good little bunkered position and I'm gonna want to get over to Ultra. My number one way is going on these plants here. So I like to walk on these plants. It keeps me up against the wall. I can always jump down onto the escalator if I start getting shot at from, let's say, um, you know, the front stairs, but it offers me some good cover using this shelf here from the front stairs, which again, if I'm spawning at Southeast and I walk into the back end of Ollie, I'm going to always expect somebody to be walking in the front end of Ollie around the same time. And so I'm going to get down here. This area is kind of dangerous, but it also is kind of dark and has good cover as well. And uh, you can watch the front stairs pretty well. So I kind of like this area. But again, it's Ollie. It's it's always kind of dangerous. Um, you want to get through this area, and the closer you get to that light right there in that big pillar, you want to get through those areas ASAP. So, okay, we're going to cut Route Bravo. We're going to go back to Route A and talk about Route A. Um, basically, just to refresh while we're walking, these cash registers, I don't like being in them at all. The light is the main thing, and also you're opening yourself up to a lot of angles. Again, you'll notice the pathing we have here. There's always a wall to our back. We're always on the edge of something, and I didn't really plan that. That actually wasn't really planned. That just kind of happened over time. The most effective routes ended up being the routes that I have a back, uh, my wall, or <laughs> my back to a wall. So route A continues from Lightroom. We would cut over here. We're gonna check down this way just in case somebody's coming at us if they spawned in the front of Ollie. And we're gonna run all the way down the back of Ollie here at the back wall. As you can see, we really like the dark spots. We really like the dark places. Now, if somebody spawned front Ollie and they rushed, they could be right in front of you right here. So be careful. You could run into somebody at any point in this area here, especially if you sprint ran in. There's a few nice spots here. You can jump up on the cardboard at that corner. Man, I wish I brought a flashlight. And you can jump up on this shelf. One of my favorite spots in all of Interchange is this shelf, and it's unfortunately exploitable. As you can see, we could actually see anybody walking in the generic donut area in a deke. We could see any of that. If somebody's walking in furniture as well, even though we'd be able to see them, they would be not silhouetting in real life. If you ADS, it's very, very dark. They're in good concealment there. Unfortunately for them, I can just unzoom and I see a gigantic bright light behind them and they're gonna be silhouetting like crazy. So yeah, great spot, but Tarkov, please fix. You can lay down right here. And I think you can lay down and kind of peek this hallway. Maybe you can't lay down and do it, but uh, you can peek all the way to Texo and Furniture, which is the next stores that we'll talk about. That'll be the end of the guide. Will be Texo and uh, Furniture in the Tech Light Escalator area. But uh, this area is pretty good. I like this spot. You can also, I mean, some players don't even notice you up here because it's kind of darker behind you a little bit, especially if it, the the sun is slightly different. Um, some players will walk over here and not even know that this is jumpable up on. Um, my friend Clutch has been able to get to that box somehow. I think he like laid down and crawled on it or, or no, he jumped backwards, I think. I don't know how he did it. I really don't know how he did it, but somehow he got over to that box one time. But I can't seem to do it. Yeah, I can't seem to do it. I don't know. There's a way to get onto that box and lay down and be floating about like two feet up in the air. I don't know how to do it. But uh, these are the Ollie front offices. There's not really much loot here. Honestly, these ones I don't even think are really worth going into unless you're really trying to flank around to the left. Um, just for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna cut around shortcut this way. This is a kind of dangerous area to be. A lot of scavs will be patrolling this area here. Um, a good area to be is this front little office here. It's a single hallway. 
Um, it's a good flanking route if people are fighting in the central area of Ali, where a usual fight will happen. Um, but just be careful, this door is only one point, so when you come through those front offices to this door, you do are you are silhouetting a little bit, plus you, I mean, you're kind of left peeking a lot. If you want to silhouette a little bit more, you're right peeking. And you can see all the way to cardboard, the jump up that we did before. Um, but this is a predictable spot, so just know that. It's a good spot, but it's predictable. So, let's talk about the main area of Ollie here. This area is extremely hot. I would say equally as hot as the generic donut area, just because it's got so many angles. If you're standing right here, you are visible from over like six different angles, six different hallways, a deek, secret hallway, all of, all of Ollie, which is like 50 hallways, honestly. You're visible from that door we were just at, which is a pretty popular spot. You're visible from Tech Light. You're visible from Texo. You're visible from uh, Boots for Life. Uh, you're visible from Texo, if I didn't say Texo. And there's just a lot of places that you can get shot here. There is a lot of cover, but you notice when you play this, this map a lot that the places that have a lot of cover have it on purpose because you're already in a bad spot. It's trying to help you when you're in a bad spot, but it's just... If you read the map, you notice that these areas of a lot of good cover are some of the worst places to be because they're out in the middle of the open. Um, this area is very interesting, and it's so complicated that, honestly, I think the best way to describe it is just always have your back to a wall. Um, always be knowledgeable of that shelf. That shelf is right there. It can see you. Um... I mean, the, the one that we were jumping up on. Always be knowledgeable that people can be up at Tech Light. People can be anywhere in Ollie and have eyes on this one spot. People can be in a deke. If you shoot somebody here, they can go all the way around to gym and go all the way around and flank to the bottom of the escalator. It's very common for people to be in Texo because there's graphics cards and motor spawns there. It's very common to pe for people to be up in Tech Light because there's also like good spawns there. Some people hatchet run just these two shops and then they'll just disconnect from the server. So, I just want you to know, this is a bad spot to be in. This is one of the worst spots to be in. Um, what I like to do is I like to come around this corner, immediately check secret, and maybe check the upper area of that, and then I'll run around to the back of furniture. And the back of furniture is this shop right here. It's, uh, or all of furniture is this shop. Again, check secret, make sure nobody's there. Furniture is a really, really good spot because one, it's very close to the furniture escalator, which goes down, and we'll talk about some underneath flanking routes in a second. You can listen here for people in Generic Donut. Generic Donut's right here. Avocado is just right here. And Rasmussen starts about, I think, like right at this pillar. So Rasmussen starts right here. It's the wood shop we were talking about earlier with the glass, right? Generic Donut. Very, very loud. You don't want to be in it, but it's very audible from furniture. Furniture in the very far back is really dark, and it has good camping spots, good cover. So I like furniture. Um, it's the best place you can be out of all of these different locations in this in this little circle here. All right, so Texo has some loot, has some graphics cards, and Tech Light also has some loot. Tech Light Escalator is kind of interesting. If you come up it, you need to just do the same thing we did at ID Escalator. You need to check all the way down really quick, make sure nobody's coming. And then we would go over to the generic donut um, that way. So flanking routes through the underneath. There's a flu, there's a, a flu, a few different flanking routes that you can do with the under part of the parking garage. Let's say you have a battle with somebody right here. Somebody's shooting you from here. They're they're right there where I just shot, or maybe they're at the front. So they're either in in position one, or they're right here at position two. So if you're engaging them from this, from ultra basically, you're in ultra, you're in this side of the map, you're engaging somebody in ollie, and you're shooting them and you're shooting them and they're kinda, they're kinda getting the advantage, then you can go down these stairs, don't go down the left one, cause there's a couch. You go down into the parking garage, there's a grenade box right here to your left. You can go all the way back this way. And there's two different options you have here. First off, make sure there's no scavs. There's some scavs that spawn right there. Um, there's the back Ollie escalator, and then there's the front Ollie stairs. So if you wanted to flank to option there, option one, I think. I don't think I said A and B. I think I said one and two. You could sneak up these escalators, which again, don't sprint up them like I just did. You could sneak up them, 
and get an angle right here and flank. Or if you wanted to, you could go all the way to the front of Ollie and flank through that way. So as you can see, it's not just that that area up there right above us, the area that I'm talking about that is really dangerous, the intersection between Ultra and Ollie. It's not just dangerous because of the areas right there. It's dangerous because you can get flanked from literally any direction. If someone's on one side of you, they can get on the absolute opposite side of you without you being able to see them even go downstairs, which is spooky as hell. So just be careful. There is glass here, which alerts anybody sitting on the you know, main stairs that you are here. But if they're, let's say, if you're sitting up at this thing and you're shooting somebody in furniture and then you don't see them for a while, they could have gone down the escalator, could could have gone down that way, could have either shot us from cardboard or they could have shot us from behind and we wouldn't even know it. That's why this is one of the most dangerous spots on the entire map and you should play around it. Don't go through it unless you really need to. You should be sprint running through this at all times and serpentining as you do it. Don't even try to look for people just serpentine and hope that they miss the first shot so that you are able to hear and see where they are after that. But um, yeah, these areas are just really, really dangerous. So this also is another flanking route. If we want to get to generic donut, we can go underneath Ollie. And instead of going down that hallway where we could have, where we laid down in a deke and we were able to see all the way to Ollie, or we would have to walk through Rasmussen, you know, that, that wood shop with the glass at the start, we can just walk downstairs, run over to this caved in floor here. And this is also a pretty common spot, but it's usually only common for, you know, the players that know the bottom of the map. We could come up this hole, check that nobody's watching from the glass up above, check that nobody's down the hallway. You've got some okay cover around you, honestly. And as long as it, as long as nobody's up at the top, what I like to do here is just hope for the best, sprint run into avocado. And then now you're in a good spot. You know, you're at this angle that we were talking about earlier. That's a really, what the, why did I start sprinting the other way? It's a really good spot. You can watch down generic. And you didn't have to walk through stupid old Rasmussen. Honestly, you're going to be only visible to the guys up above for just like a few seconds. They're not expecting somebody to come up the, the hole. They're expecting to see people way down there or expecting to see people way down there. They're not looking straight down. And you're not even audible, audible to them, I bet, until you're probably right here. You're not even audible. So just come up these stairs, check your close front really quick, and then just hope that no scavs are there. Run into Avocado. And when you're in Avocado, make sure to be aware of people up above. <sighs> All right, guys. I think that's it for my at least part one guide. This video was probably an hour, over an hour long. So that's my guide for interchange. Um, I'm really tired. It's 4 a.m. in the morning and I've almost lost my voice because of this video because I've been talking so much. So um, leave some feedback in the description or in the comments down below and maybe we'll cover the outside of interchange in the next episode, cover the strategies and some of the things there I use. Um, but yeah, I think we covered a lot of interchange. We covered all the main common areas. And I think I, um, I, I think we definitely brushed over some areas, like some, a lot of the underneath of the map we didn't cover, a lot of the outside of the map we didn't even cover. But those areas are a lot more muscle memory locations. I don't think those areas really have like as much strategy. Also, they aren't really as common as well. So I hope that I covered the most common areas in the map. And I hope that this will help you out in becoming a better player at Interchange. And uh, if you really like this guide, definitely just start putting Goblin at the end of your tags so that if you die or if somebody kills you, and they realize they recognize goblin in your dog tag, then they know that you're a fellow interchange goblin, and uh, you know you're 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 basically a pro at this map. So if you're a fellow interchange goblin like me, you know what? I'm gonna start changing my dog tag. It's gonna start having goblin in it, so that all of us will will be able to see each other and fight each other. And if we fight each other, we're gonna give each other good good handshakes, good good chess you know chess match ending handshakes. None of that toxic toxicity in here. We're all goblins. 
if we have goblins in our dog tag, we're all goblins. And uh, we always respect each other, you know, fellow goblins, fellow interchange goblins. We unite. We try to prey upon the people that are below in Ultra as we stay up on the top and camp from Generic Donut. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. I am freaking tired. I'll see you guys later. <laughs>